Man, oh man, oh man, I'm turning to Dark Corner Studios. I have to double down on my thoughts and opinions on the Beacon Studio because when I did my video on it, there were people in the comment section saying that the person I was referencing in the video was actually Senpai Gaming or Harris Heller. And spoiler alert, that wasn't the person I was actually, you know, referencing. But because they referenced that person, there was a person in my comment section who's been going around to all the Beacon Studio reviews or wherever. Anytime somebody says something negative, he's trying to back the company. And I, I don't know if he works with the companies secretly or he's trying to get the company to notice them or something. I, I don't know. But it's just kind of weird. It's weird behavior, in my personal opinion. But he defended, you know, Senpai Gaming by saying that he's been using the microphone for almost three years now. And he uses it on his live stream still. And he has access to, you know, obviously uh, a variety of products and companies that he could potentially use and everything like that. But there's a reason why he's still using it and everything. And even Harris Heller, which I think is pretty cool. He actually commented on the video with a hush emoji. I think that's pretty awesome. This person doesn't know what happens behind closed doors. This person, obviously, in my personal opinion, has not reached that threshold to start working with brands on a contractual level to where you're getting paid, you know, 10 grand, 20 grand, five grand, a thousand dollars, whatever it may be. Um, a lot of these co content creators are getting paid that much, however, through a exclusivity contract or just a contract in general, saying that not only they will do a review of the product that they're giving the content creator, but they will also continuously use the product or wherever X amount of times throughout a quarter or a couple months or a couple of videos, whatever it may be. And I'll get into a little bit more later on in the video, but there are going to be people out there saying that, well, there's two sides of the coin. And I agree. There are going to be people out there who actually get paid for these videos and stuff and continue to use these products because they actually genuinely like these products. I would like to believe that Harris Heller, Senpai Gaming, whatever you want to call them by, um, is using, you know, the Beacon Studio and the Beacon Mic and all these other products, whatever that he reviews, because he genuinely recommends them and likes them and everything like that. But unfortunately, I've never met the guy. I don't know if he's g being genuine or whatever about his reviews. It's, it's through the internet. You know what I'm saying? There's no way I can make an informed decision on that, you know, topic or whatever. But it's something that I would like to believe. But I also am not dumb. I'm not going to sit there and believe that every single content creator, regardless if they're getting sponsored or getting paid or signing a contract or not, or just getting a product for free, is making a actual genuine review. I don't expect people to believe that what I'm doing or whatever is a genuine review, you know what I mean? Or I have a genuine thoughts and, and opinions on a product. It's just not feasible to do that. You should always have, you should always be on high alert. You know what I'm saying? You should always have this degree of understanding the video that you're watching. There might be some lies in it. You know what I'm saying? It's just, it's just common sense. You know what I'm saying? It's what makes us human. You know what I'm saying? As far as being able to have a higher form of intelligence. But unfortunately, there's people out there like this person who's going around commenting and stuff like that, who seemingly is just assuming that just because somebody did a paid video for a product and they're continuously using it almost three years later and every time the company drops a product or every time they have to use the product in the video or talk about the product or wherever it's coming from a genuine place in their heart and i'm always skeptical you know what i'm saying regardless you can say i'm being too cautious or wherever but it's just the truth you have to be skeptical because you don't know if the person's being genuine because that person got paid. You know what I'm saying? There's a reason why the person got paid. There's a reason why that person has a whole bunch of subscribers and analytics and all that stuff or wherever and companies are looking at it and being like, okay, we're gonna pay this content creator to cover it. There's a reason why a company like Beacon would reach out to that content creator and this content creator and won't reach out to a content creator like me. You know what I'm saying? There's a reason why. And it's not always going to boil down to analytics and subscriber count. It's going to be, is this person brand safe? Can we trust this person if we give them amount of money or a product for free to be able to manipulate the video into a way that people are going to assume that our product is the best thing since the Holy Grail? And can we manipulate that content creator to keep on using the product months down the line after the, pro the product review is already done and over with? And there's a reason why you will see, again, content creators keep on using a product months down the line, years down the line. And it's because they're continuously getting paid behind the scenes or wherever 
and it's in their contract that they have to use it for X amount of videos every month, X amount of videos per quarter or something like that. And again, you don't know if this person is being genuine, you know what I'm saying? And like I said, they really do endorse the product. They stand behind the product. They really actually like the product or they're the other side of the coin where they're just doing it because it's in their contract and they're just getting that paycheck. Again, I don't know which side of the fence or which side of the coin Harris Hill is on or whatever. But again, I wasn't re referencing him in my previous video. But since we're doing it, let's go ahead and do it. I do want to say it's pretty cool that Harris Heller actually gave the hush emoji because I think that he was trying to say that not to talk about it. But um, we're going to talk about it. All right. So now that we got the stipulation out the way, I'm going to give you guys an example of what I'm talking about here. Now, I am sponsored with Glitch energy and that's the reason why you'll see the little thing that pops up on the screen or whatever the little graphic at the beginning of all my videos and you'll always find a link in the description to them as well as my little coupon code if you want to call it that to save 20 percent off that's why if you follow me on twitter every now and then i tweet out a picture of the product and i talk about the product as an ad spot or something like that or i mention them every now and then in a video verbally or if you go to my kick channel page where i stream there's always a graphic you know on screen while i'm streaming or you know in in the actual panels down below wherever to advertise the product in the company because that's stipulated in my contract that I have to do those things and those links and stuff like that and the code are ways for companies to you know see if you're buying the product and stuff and see how your performance is as far as you know pushing the product where because you're sponsored by them and in turn every other month or wherever glitch sends me out tub and if I perform really well obviously I could possibly get a flavor or shake a cup whatever it is or whatever typically that's what what happens with energy supplement companies but in the contracts i can't you know buy a different you know brand or use a different brand and take photos and and everything like that and use it on stream all that stuff because that would be conflict of interest and again that's stipulated in my contract another stipulation is that if i do decide not to i would say re-up my contract at the end of it then up to two months after you know my contract's done i can't sign with another brand energy supplement company whatever i can't um pretty much publicly talk about one or anything like that again up to two months after the contract and obviously there's other stuff within the contract and stuff but that's just like a genuine uh, i would say overview of what we're going to be talking about today is that sometimes people who sign contracts and exclusivity exclusivity deals and stuff like that as far as using a product or not using a, a competing brand or whatever it is when they do a sponsored video and stuff might be in their contract you as a consumer you as the viewer do not know this information so when you see a company you know sponsor somebody for a let's say a microphone and i'm just going to be upfront and honest with you if a company is paying you you know and you're sponsored and they're paying you each time to cover you know their products or something like that or you're working with a brand like that and i'm just don't going out on a limb here because this person has you know a lot of subscribers and they get a lot of views and engagement on their videos i would say per video every time they release one and they're making high class high quality you know production style videos for the company to advertise the product and they're talking so good about it and everything like that i would go out on a limb saying they signed some kind of contract um and on top of that there that's the reason why you're seeing the microphone in as far as from beacon or wherever in a lot of their videos and you're seeing it on their live streams and stuff like that because it's probably a stipulation in their contract that every so often x amount of videos per month or x amount of videos per quarter or whatever they not only have to use the microphone or they have to use the microphone boom arm or anything like that and you can go back and watch this person's channel and you will see if they're not using the microphone they're probably using the microphone boom arm something like that something that shows the brand off in the video even if it's you know just in the background or something subtle like i said the microphone boom arm that's what we call product placement meaning that when somebody sees it they recognize the brand and people will be like well you know that's just how the industry goes and i understand that but there's people out there that don't get that they do not understand that if you sign a contract with a company and you're using let's say again for example their microphone in the video and you do a review then when you sign a contract or whatever talking about it and stuff like that you will have to reference it 
every single time you do a microphone review. Meaning if I have the Fine Fine K688 here, they send out for a review. I am sponsored by them, but it's a different type of sponsorship. We'll get to that in a second. But let's say they sponsor me and where I respond to the video and I signed an actual literal contract. That contract could have a stipulation in there that every so often I have to use this microphone in a video. And when I do microphone comparisons or I review another company's microphone, I have to compare it to this microphone as well as any other microphone I own, you know, stuff like that within the video or in some kind of unlisted video or something like that. So people can make an informed decision on their purchase. Or it might even go to an exclusivity microphone uh, contract where I can only use that brand's microphone for public videos like that's going on my YouTube. For my live stream, I could probably use whatever microphone I want. But when it comes to actual dedicated videos and every so often, let's say I make four videos a month, two of those videos have to be done using their microphone from the company it doesn't have to be the one that i specifically covered but it has to be the microphone from the company and that's what people are missing as far as when it comes to these sponsor videos now my sponsorship with fine fine i never signed a literal contract the stipulation was it, through the representative and the company was depending on my Amazon performance sales of their products. So people purchasing, you know, fine, fine products through my Amazon associates, you know, affiliate links or wherever I get paid. Obviously, that's how a lot of content creators, you know, get their affiliate money and stuff like that. They look at those sales performances. They look at the amount of uh, products that I sold from fine fine on amazon and then they pay me on top of that or wherever every like quarter or something like that and that's why the videos are sponsored now and you know now that's another source of income that's a different type i would say of sponsorship that's probably not as common out there other than the other types of ones like i talked about with glitch energy where you sign kind of like an exclusivity contract those are probably more popular and the other ones is going to be more popular of a company reaches out to a content creator they want them to cover a actual product of theirs and they're working on a long lasting you know friendship or partnership or whatever you want to call it and every time the content creator reviews one of their products like just in the video itself like a dedicated video that would be a sponsored video that means they get paid for it but again in those contracts it might be stipulated that hey you have to make a video talking about something or doing some kind of thing or wherever and our product some way shape or form has to be in the video it does it doesn't matter what product it is but one of our products has to be in your video and you have to make x amount of videos within a time frame like i said a month to two months it could be every quarter i i don't know it's whatever the content creator and the company has decided to uh, agree on and that's the thing and i'm not saying that this content creator you know has that type of contract or wherever and that's why you're seeing the microphone being used as far as the beacon uh, microphone or wherever or any other products that this person uses or wherever and i'm not saying that this person does not uh i would say genuinely like the beacon microphone or the software or any products from them and everything but to sit there with your god-given brain and what makes us the highest, I would say, intelligent life form on the face of this planet and makes us sentient. And you don't use that capability to be able to easily to just be able to discern that, hey, just because this person is constantly using this product doesn't always mean that they like this product as much as I think they do or as much as they're putting to your face and that's the thing is a lot of these content creators are being able to pull the wool over people's eyes because they're just like they automatically assume hey i keep seeing this person use this product i keep seeing them use it all the time that means they like it and that's what the companies are bank banking on and that's why they tell people to do the product placements a lot of people won't disclose that hey their contract even though I'm doing a actual dedicated video telling you about this product, I'm going to have to use this product several times 
in the future. That's why they're using it months down the line, years down the line and stuff like that, because they have an ongoing contract with a brand that's going to be putting out products continuously or semi continuously, however you want to look at it as far as the space out uh, products that have been released from Beacon and stuff. So future editing squid here, I want to go ahead and reiterate. I'm not saying that this person in particular is lying to his community or anybody like that like i've said multiple times in this video he might actually like the beacon microphone or any other product that he's reviewing and that's why he's only picking and choosing to do these sponsored videos or wherever from certain brands and companies because he actually stands behind the products and everything and like i said earlier in my stipulation that there's two sides to every coin there are going to be people who actually pick and choose their sponsorships and pick and choose the product or wherever because they had the product first and they tested it and they used it and then they decided to go ahead and do the video and go ahead with the sponsorship um that's something that i did with glitch energy i've talked to the representatives and the person that is my personal i would say manager for this kind of thing and i used it for about a month before i went ahead and signed a contract Contract with them because I wanted to make sure that the energy worked for me at least personally because I have a lot of issues and I, I am vitamin D like deficient and I have like sleep apnea all that stuff so I need something that's actually going to work with me and I've tried other brands out there and some worked some didn't and because of the size of my channel and my analytics and all that stuff, a lot of those companies are probably not even going to look at me when it comes to, you know, asking for a sponsorship or to work with the brand or wherever. And luckily, like I said, Glitch Energy, at least for me personally, again, it might your results may vary, but for me, it actually worked for me. So that's the reason why I went ahead and went with them. And like I said, case in point with other content creators, that might also be the case. And in this person that we're talking about, particularly um, just as an example, Again, they might genuinely like the product. They might genuinely like using whatever product they're using for the live stream setup, for you know doing whatever for their content creation needs, even off screen or on screen, it doesn't matter. So again, take what I'm saying or wherever and you can apply it to other content creators. You can still apply it to this content creator. It's up to you. Again, use your brain. But I just want to go ahead and point that out again, because I know people are probably going to be like, well, you know, you're bashing this content creator way too hard or, you know, how do you know and all that stuff? Like I said, it's it's going to be up to the viewer. It's going to be up to the potential consumer to be able to discern the difference between is this person being legitimate or not and it's getting harder and harder to do that when everybody that you're seeing when you're watching videos all the videos are sponsored and they're like oh go use this go use this go use this just throwing it in your face all the time and like i said half the time some of the content creators are not even using the platform the website they're advertising or the elements for editing that they're advertising or the, even the product that they're advertising a lot of them are just doing it because they need to make the video and they're getting paid 10 grand 20 grand 100 grand you know one grand it doesn't matter they're getting paid you know what i'm saying and at the end of the day they're just doing it for a paycheck you know what i'm saying there are content creators out there like that it's up to you again to use your brain to discern is the content creator you're watching one of those people or one of those genuine people who are willing to sit there and actually use the product and condone it and you know back it and stuff like that it's going to be up to you and like i said it's going to be hard they can't discern like hey there's a reason why this person is constantly using this product you know months down the line years down the line like people don't understand like when you're watching a movie there's a reason why companies have placements there's a reason why you see pepsi coke you know uh i don't know pringles or something like that in the in the background of a movie even if it's getting destroyed from a billboard or something like that that's product placement that's advertisement you know what i'm saying even if it has nothing to do with the current movie or anything like that nobody's drinking pepsi coke or anything like that you still see an advertisement on the side of a building or something you know what i mean like that's what companies are doing. They're strategically just always being in your face, even though they're kind of out of sight, out of mind thing or whatever. It's a psychology, it's a psychological thing. You know what I'm saying? It's like the basics of psychology and people are falling for it. And lastly, I want to go over what this person was saying as far as their comment to me goes, as far as them having the Beacon Mix Create and the microphone and having other friends or wherever that have, you know, the products from Beacon and never had a problem or issue and they, they all love it and rant and rave about it and everything. I do want to go ahead and say that obviously the person didn't watch the full video. Obviously this person is not a smart consumer because they're telling me to go ahead and purchase it on a website or through through like a third party system and if i don't like it just return it 
why am I going to go ahead and spend that much money regardless of what product of beacons I get is over $200 for me just to return it? Why wouldn't I check out and make sure before I pull the trigger on a product that it's in a good spot? That is even going to be worth my time getting the product, setting up the software, doing learning tutorials, doing all that stuff or whatever, just to find out all that time and days waited and all that stuff or whatever was just wasted because the product is trash. And how do you circumvent that stuff? By looking up reviews and the reviews and the overall sentiment is the fact of I'm probably still going to run into the same issues that I'm dealing with Elgato with the Beacon software. Just because you never experienced it doesn't mean other people haven't experienced it. Just because I experience issues with Elgato software doesn't mean all the droves of people that I know since I've been doing this since 2014, people have not had the same issues and don't have a problem with Elgato software. Doesn't mean my experience is invalid. Doesn't mean everybody who has negative experiences with the Beacon software is invalid. It's called being a smart consumer, making sure you do your due diligence and your research before you purchase something to make sure it's even worth your time or effort to even try out the product. The last thing that you should be doing is returning the product because you should have been doing your due diligence and your research before you purchased it. Again, that's called being a smart consumer. That's what you would do, like for instance, a metaphor, me and my wife sat there for three months, days, hours, whatever you wanna call it, minutes on how we were going to get a car, what dealership we were gonna go with, what manufacturer of the car we were going to go with, what make and model we were going to go with, what trim we were going to go with. We went and tested out at dealerships. We went and tested out the different versions of the car and stuff like that. We went through all the steps that you're supposed to do before you purchase a car. We didn't just drive up on a lot and was like, oh, we want that car over there. We're going to go ahead and pick it up or wherever without test driving it without anything. And yes, this devices and everything are less expensive, but they're going to allow you to be able to do your job as a content creator. So you should be hesitant on pulling the trigger on something, especially if it's going to cost 200 and something dollars. Because you're going to have to daily drive it just like you would have to do a car. So you would do your due diligence and your research before you even pick up a product. And what I'm seeing is the frustration that I'm having with the Elgato software is the same potential issue I can have or worse with the Beacon software. Regardless on how many mouths Beacon is getting to say great stuff about their products. Regardless of what the, the software can do. For instance, this person said that, oh, this Beacon Studio can allow you to do a dual PC setup. I had a dual PC setup with the Wave XLR. It took me like four steps. There's a very detailed informational video out there on the platform roughly right when the XLR Wave XLR came out that I was able to set up a dual PC setup. I had it running perfectly fine other than the bugginess of the software. I had no issues with it. I was doing Discord, all, all the stuff. I had all the, the Wavelink, everything. I, I had no issue. So because you couldn't do it with the Wave XLR shows that you didn't do your due diligence and learn how to do it. Yes, it's probably a little bit easier on the Beacon Studio because it's right there. But again, th like three or four steps. It wasn't that hard. You know what I'm saying? Again, it's be called being a smart consumer. The only reason why I went with the Wavelink software because at the time there wasn't any other products out there that had the capabilities and stuff what I was looking for. Now in the market years later, there's a lot of companies trying to fight for this space or wherever for content creators to be able to do these certain things. But the fact of the matter is a lot of them really suck at it, whether it's a lack of physical controls or the lack of being able to control the actual software through the physical device or the physical device just sucks. And right now, unfortunately, there's only really two big contenders now that the Beacon Studio is out and that's Beacon and Elgato. There's other companies out there who are trying, but they're failing miserably at it. And when the top two contenders are pretty much have really bad software and really bad user experience, it's like rolling the dice, Russian roulette. So me taking a step back and being a smart consumer before I pull the trigger on something that is still, in my personal opinion, is expensive. It's not gonna hurt me or wherever purchasing something for 200 something dollars or wherever, and I could be perfectly fine with it. It's not gonna hurt me. I, I bought the Sony ZV-E10 Mark II. Like, it's not gonna hurt me. The fact of the matter is I need to justify my purchase. I'm gonna do my due, due diligence and my research before I make a purchase on something. And sitting there saying somebody shouldn't do that, 
That's crazy. With that being said, hopefully you guys found this video informative or helpful in any way, shape or form. You can let me know by leaving a like or a comment on the video. If you're new to the channel and you want to see some more videos from me, then you already know what you can do. Hit that subscribe button and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Y'all take care. Have a squid day. God bless you and yours. And deuces to everybody. Much love.